the summit moving down in the woodland down there, moving around. I hear the farmer's tractor. I also hear breaking the branches. I'm at a spot where I've never been before, so I ain't got any idea what goes on around here. But this is the joys of stealth camping. Tonight I'm going to be using a one man tent, low profile, and I do have. Look how noisy it is! I do have my camo on it as well. I'll bring you back. I'm going to have to. Do I go have a look? What do you think? Whatever it is, I really don't want to disturb it. See if it pops out there. Eh? Right, so I've moved away from that location. I found a beautiful flat spot here. Unbelievable, just under this massive, I think it's in a, a conker tree. So I'm quite happy here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to clean the floor up and bits and bats like this anyway dry sticks. I do need these for cooking so I will be collecting all these and you can hear that farmer going around this field collecting all grass so I have to hope to God that I don't get seen by him. <laughs> Stealth camping 100% this. Well I'm gonna have a little fire out so 98 maybe. <laughs> Right, I'll, uh, I'll sort stuff out and then I'll bring you back. collect all this in one pile and in the morning take my tent down push it all back over and then we're leaving no trace as we stealth camping but I can hear that farmer seems to be getting closer to the field behind us it's all movement I really want to get done now what well, is away from the part where I am right so the tent I'm using tonight is low profile exactly you know for stealth camping it's my fox one v2 from oex i don't think this tent has had the problems with the poles being difficult to get into the uh pole holders but we'll have another go anyway and i'll definitely find out myself it's a nice green color so you know we're in this bit of small bit of woodland I don't call it one, it's a strip of trees basically between two farmers fields and uh, it's a nice green colour so it blends in beautiful with the trees and the surroundings you know I'm really excited because this is a proper stealth camp video to me really really proper stealth camp video now the problem with these little one man bivy tents people call them I like to call it a one man tent is it's not for you know, sitting up in, making a drink in. It's mainly for this sort of video when you're hiking a long distance and it's late at night. It's more of a sleeping tent more than a, a practical tent to sit up and do stuff in it because you can clearly see, you know, I'm in it here. My feet are already at the bottom. And there's the top here. So it's not for, like, say, a winter camping tent. It's definitely a, a summertime like it is now. But for this sort of video, these tents are perfect. 
I really do like using these tents, I really do. Small, low profile, you can sneak in a little bush, stick your cam on it over it, and you're laughing all night, and you're enjoying a nice little bit of stealth camping. <laughs> stealth camping. I just want to get a picture or a quick video of the farmer who's cutting his grass. See him there? He's all making all the noise. There he goes. Down back of that field there. See him passing now. And I'm doing a bit of stealth camping just on the top of the slope there. Yeah, it's a very, very fine bit of woodland. Like I say, it opens, if I can tap my screen, all right. It opens into all these fields in that direction. Now I thought I'd get the uh, farmer in view a little bit, but not too much so he sees me. I know what people say, honestly. I've been on YouTube five years now, I've done things like this before. So someone will say, it's his wife cutting grass, or neighbours, and he's, he's camping in the back garden. But he's back anyway. Let's see if I can get another clip for you. Now if that's my wife playing around in that big lawnmower, I don't know where she's got the money from to buy that thing. <laughs> and how the hell is she driving it? <laughs> but yeah, look at him. Backwards and forwards, cutting grass. So, there's the Fox One tent put up. I think, if I'm right, this is probably the first time I'm using this tent. I do have the Fox Two, uh, Fox One, sorry, in uh, the black. I might have used it once actually. Once I might have used it. This one. It really is a decent size just for this sort of summer camping. Inside this side here, under the fly sheet you've got another zip so I can put like my rucksack on this side here from the inside because there's no way inside that you can put your rucksack and there's a little bit of porch where there I can open that and make a quick brew if I want to do fruit night but it's only one entrance now the Fox 2 has two entrances so you can open either side as you please but I pegged it out because the wind is getting stronger seems as time goes on unless so uh, I've pegged it out there as well just to keep it a little bit more steadier in case it does get really strong winds right so I'm going to show you something because quite a few people have asked me about these OEX tents if you get the new OEX tents and it's the outer is the green if the fly sheet is green They'll have like this, I'm going to say orangey goldy colour inner. If you get the red OEX tents, then the inners are more likely to be blue. So yeah, any tents with the green, then the inners will be this goldy orange colour. It's a lot like the Van Gogh colour this one is on the inside. But Van Gogh and OEX are owned by the same people. So that's why they're sort of copying colours anyway, I think they're doing it now. Yeah, right, let's get my air blood blown up. Right, so that's from the back side of the uh, tent. If you walk past that, you wouldn't even realise really if there was anything or anybody in there. Unless I wake up with my snoring. But I'd know if someone were walking around late at night, wouldn't I? And then this is the front side. And what I can do later on tonight is pull the camo on it over and I'm proper 100% stealth camp in the tent. Now, basically, anybody coming this way through night, I should see them. It's the other side of the field where I want to be a little bit more protected from. 
yeah it does look really good is all around the bottom of the camo net all the leaves what I've scraped up earlier basically hid the straight line of the uh, camo net apart from this idea so I'll quickly show you what I mean I think I'm going a little bit extreme for what I'm doing but you know why not give it a try A company sent me this air pump, but it's an air pump, a charger for your phone's emergency bit of power, and it's also got a light on it. What's it bright in it? Turn it off. But yeah, it's an air pump. Now, I were after one of these, so you know, they said would I like one, so I thought, you know what, why not? So I'll turn it on. I just let it blow. Yeah, but it... it's like it is doing. <laughs> no more going dizzy. Well, I'm always dizzy anyway. What a game changer these little air pumps are. I've seen a few other YouTubers, you know, using them. I think uh, Scott's got one. And wow, it blew it up in let's say 30 seconds maybe. And you got all these different attachments. Once I've used it a few times, I'll do a quick video about it on my channel. But this just means no more blowing these air beds up, getting out of breath, <laughs> going dizzy almost collapsing with no oxygen <laughs> yeah you can keep it away in this little sto uh, stove bag I want to say then in fact I've just been looking at my new stove as well in this little storage sack like this so there's my setup Trekology I think it's the LU LU80 ultra light sleeping mat uh, British Army sleeping bag but I've turned it into a quilt I'm sort of, you know, summertime, not wanting to be tucked up in a uh, sleeping bag too much. So, yeah, someone sent me a brand new army sleeping bag. So, this old one that I've got, the zip were a bit diffy on it anyway. So, took it to a, a sewing shop, took the zip off, restitched it all, and made myself a real nice quilt out of it. And I got this decent sized puller actually from Home Bargains, I think it was. It squashes down pretty well in the bottom of my rucksack. So a nice puller there as well. Right, so I've had to put my torch on probably the lowest setting that I've got because inside this strip of woodland, it's starting to get darker than outside of the woodland. And I want to cook my dinner, but I do have to use this uh, titanium firebox stove that I've got with my tripod and my cook grill. Now, yeah, I know it's stealth camping, and I know probably having a little fire is not probably the most best thing to do when you're stealth camping. But I've just decided if I do it while it's daytime, still outside, it's I think about half nine now. It'll be a lot better than trying to cook when it's night time, innit? Now if you agree with me on that point, do thumbs up my video and let me know. And if you like what I'm doing, there's a lot of people who do thumbs up my video. I do appreciate everybody who does that. But I just feel like it's going to be better now. If I cook my dinner while well, there's still a little bit of light and he's busy. If he starts seeing a little bit of fire flicking around in woods as it gets any darker, I am, you know, sort of giving myself away. So I have got to crack on really, haven't I? Now a few people have the different ways of using these stoves. Some people like to do it so they've got long sticks sticking all the way out like that and as it burns they keep pushing them in. Some people like just to pack them out. I like to sort of fill them up and just let it burn away. But because I want to keep this fire small, I'm not going to fill it up as much as I used to do. I 
and make a little, there we go, a bit of a gap there now. So this is the first time that I have used this titanium stove. So bear with me. It sounds like the farmer's moving over the fields now, so that's a bit of a relief really. See if I can get that going. Right, well, I needed a fire because 350 grams of pure steak. You know, everybody loves it when I cook a steak on this channel. Got some seasons on it, salt, garlic, herbs, a little bit of spice on it as well. I'm going to let it die down a little bit, stick the steak on top of the grill, lower it down to where the heat is. Put the steak on and then we'll just let it to cook i'm so looking forward to eating this steak people i really am right i'm going to put the steak on top i'm slowly going to let it cook away by moving it up and down as and when i need to do but for now i know it's perfect heat that doesn't it perfect heat and perfect distance away from the stove I've got some more I can pull it up to if I need to move it out of the way completely now I know what someone's going to say you're not exactly stealth camping if you're having a fire and you're cooking steak the farmer's dog can smell it from a mile off yeah I do agree actually probably will <laughs> but if everybody on YouTube stealth camped the same you know just took a tin of beans at some say some out to eat or some noodles where you can add up water to them every stealth camp video would be the same so why not push the boat out a little bit why not get that little bit of extra risk involved if he catches me what can he do on your way I don't want you here sorry mate pack up and just walk away apologise and just walk away but it's good to take these little chances isn't it play that little bit of extra risk that's what I say anyway. <laughs> Push the boat out. Take your chances. Live your life once, people. Don't be that person behind the city commenting, going, what a div. That ain't stealth camping. <laughs> what should I call it? 91% stealth camping. I think that's what I'll call this video. <laughs> 91% stealth camping that'll go down brilliant that <laughs> yeah where's 9% gone well I had a fire I cooked some steak I shined a torch in the middle of his little woodland you know <laughs> rest of it yeah 91% was stealth camping but I love to cook and we all love steak on this channel we all love firebox stoves on this channel take the risk that's what I say. <laughs> what else can you do? you got to risk it, haven't you? Right, so I need to turn this steak over. It's not hot there. Well, that looks quite nice on that side, doesn't it? I think I do need to lift it off the flames a little bit because I've just put some more uh, wood in it. So there we go, can lift it up easy enough. It's way above the flames now. If you're watching this so far, you may realise I put a YouTube short on last night. Well, it's tonight to me, but... Yeah, I like to do these little YouTube short videos just so you get an idea what I'm up to and when you can expect the next video. That is cooking. Absolutely beautiful.
So I'm going to remove my steak. I do believe that's done. Let's let that cool down for a few minutes. In the meantime, we'll stick some water on this stove. And we'll better make ourselves a nice cup of coffee. I don't really need too much water, unless I get a nice drink out of it and a little bit for afterwards. I'll be happy at that. Right. Let's just stick it on, simple as that. Push these bits in here. And we'll just feed a little bit more wood in. And let the water boil. Right, so I've just cut the steak. Let's have a look what it looks like inside. That is very nice. Still nice and juicy. Mmm, beautiful. Well, it's time to try the steak. I'm going to be truthful, I've just ate a massive chunk. <laughs> I thought, you know what, let's have a taste. But you know what, I'll do this piece on camera. That bite was just as good as the first bite. I might have put a little bit too much of the salt on it, but still, it's fantastic. See how smoke I'm breathing in there? Try and move back a little bit. Oh, it's not smoke. My water's boiled. <laughs> but yeah, look, I say it a million times and I'll say it again on this channel. If you're someone who's sitting there going, oh, wow, I'd like to try that, just get up, get yourself one of these cheap little stoves off Amazon, you know, Get to the supermarket, buy yourself some uh, meat, give it a try. I'm honestly going to say this now, once you've tried it once, you cannot stop doing this. It's like every time is a sense of adventure and a sense of achievement when it works out for you. Honestly, you will enjoy doing it. And the more you cook, the more you want to get out. The more you just want to keep pushing it, seeing how far you can go. With me, I love doing steak on these uh, boxes. I've tried doing chops. I've tried doing belly pork. But it seems to be steak is the way I always end up turning back to uh, cooking. Probably because it's easy as well. <laughs> Stick it on. <laughs> Wait till it's cooked. Get it off and eat it. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. But... Let's make a coffee. So you may have realised I've put my torch into green mode. A minute ago I had it on red mode. I'm sort of just testing out which one's better for the camera for these sort of stealth camp videos I don't think these angles will be too hot no. Right people, well, my little stove, I sat there for about an hour and a half filling it up with wood. Not have it too high, you know, keep the fire low. <sighs> I don't mind solo camping because, you know, you get a bit of you time. But also, it can get a little bit boring just by yourself on the other side. And you end up catching yourself looking at your phone all the time. There's only so much thinking you can do. <laughs> <laughs> only helps. There's so much I can do, let's say, for I start thinking of stuff what really has no no interest to me. So, you know, yeah, solo camping's nice, but you do miss company. Scott, Mick, vegan outdoors now. Yeah, you do miss having people around. But we'll all be back together next week, and I think we'll be out and about. You know what? 
for now, I'm going to get myself off to sleep. This light here is actually the air pump. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little uh, set of LED lights. One, two, three, four. Eight LED lights. And you can change the setting on it from brightness to dull. Anyway. There's a little fly in here as well. You see it on light then. <laughs> I'm getting off to sleep. Good night, everyone. Well, good morning, people. It's uh, 10 to 6. My uh, Trichology air mat's got a leak in it. So I had to get up a few times through the night and reinflate it. I think if you can tell now. Yeah, it's got a leak in it. Quite a lot of people did not warn me about those mats. I'm gonna have to sort some out now, aren't I? Get another mat or something. Air hey, mat. Morning, it's a bit windy as well. Give you a look outside. Ten to six. Lovely and bright. I actually had to stick my stand up in the tree <laughs> I had no more room for it and I didn't want it to be on the floor in case anybody, you know, walked past I did leave my stove out it was a bit too hot to move You know, I said last night, but I've had one of these uh, tents before. Fox One tents in the black colour. The first time I used it, I woke up through the night having a panic attack. Because I felt really claustrophobic in it. But none of that last night in this one. Probably is the best tent I've got for these sort of videos. <laughs> Right, well, good morning everyone. I'm wide awake now. Uh, it's quarter past seven when I'm stealth camping. I really don't like to be out any late, uh, earlier than this or later than this, whichever way around you want to call it. Yeah, I really want to be gone by half past seven, so I've got 15 minutes to pack up. So as soon as I've packed up, I'll bring you back, show you there's no trace of me being here, and then we'll head off home. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chuck all these parts what I uh, pulled over last night. You know, I'll make it look like I'm never here. 